Hi, and welcome to History Makers. I'm Matt Prater. Today we're speaking with Fiona Simpson. She's the state member for Maroochydore and the Queensland Speaker for Parliament. How are you doing? I'm great. It's great to have you along today. And uh, I've been so impressed to see we've got a, a woman speaker looking after that rowdy bunch at Parliament. <laughs> How long have you been in that role now? I've uh, been speaker for just over two years, okay. nearly three years. Mm -hmm. And yes, I enjoy it. It's a different role, but it's, uh, it's a great role on yeah. behalf of the whole Parliament. Oh, wonderful. Well, uh, I'm just uh, so envious of you being based at Maroochydore. It's one of my favourite beaches in the world up there. Oh, it's one of my favourite too, but not just because I'm the local <laughs> member of Parliament. But, Let's yeah. find out a bit of your story. Whereabouts were you born and raised? I was actually born in uh, the Mallee in Victoria, mm -hmm. which is a semi arid part of Australia. It's okay. pretty, pretty dry. Mm -hmm. And that's where my family pioneered in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And, but my parents uh, reached the stage when I was only a, a little kid. Mm -hmm. They realised that for us as a family, mm -hmm. as a young family, they wanted us to be close to the schools mm -hmm. and they knew that the future would be somewhere else. They saw Queensland as being the future and that's mm -hmm. where they took us when I was just three years old. Okay. And did you have a religious upbringing in your family? Or? Yes, mum and dad are, are Christians and I grew up in a household where we went to Sunday school. They were involved in the church and uh, they'd obviously pray with us as kids and, mm -hmm. and, and give thanks over a meal. So they did model uh, not just religious trappings but very much about caring for us as a family. Mm. So I was fortunate to have a very loving upbringing. Mm. And at a young age, did you think you were going to be a politician one day? Did you have that as part of your destiny? No, this is not something I had in the career path plan of life. And uh, I think for me, I always wanted to be a journalist mm -hmm. and that's what I, uh, I aim for and that's what I did. So mm -hmm. it was a bit of a detour. Mm -hmm. So you ended up uh, as a journo for the Sunshine Coast Daily, didn't you? Uh, what, what kind of articles did you write for them? That's right. I was with a regional newspaper mm -hmm. and the beauty of regional papers, other than the fact you write a lot of stories in a day, but you do get to cover a lot of the community. Okay. So you're not just on a, a crime round or mm -hmm. on, a, on a council round. So journalists tend to do rounds. Mm -hmm. You get to cover many areas. And so I suppose it gives you an insight into a local community mm -hmm. and connecting with what's happening in that community. So, you know, there were some tragic stories. There were stories of, of uh, tragedies of murders and mm. things that really impact you and seeing how they impact your local area mm. and other areas that will be the great joys, the stories of people's happy milestones. Mm. So I like a good story, but it's about people at the heart of it. And yeah. so I enjoy how do you find out that and tell that mm. as authentically as you can. Mm. And back to your faith journey, uh, tell us your story. You mentioned you're raised in a religious household. Did you stay following the Lord all through your teenage years or was there a, a time you were away from God or how did that happen? Look, I, I think you know, if I was proverbially hit by the bus, I would have, I was a, a kid who didn't go outside of the church, but I went through a real period of questioning. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think I really challenged when I was a, a young adult coming uh, into, uh, into adulthood, what was truth. Mm -hmm. And I lived in Japan as an exchange student for 12 months. I lived in a, 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 some wonderful homes with people with very different cultural backgrounds and, and beliefs. So, for me, it was a very challenging time in a faith setting uh, to say, well, what is truth? Mm. Uh, here are these wonderful people. They've worshipped this way for thousands of years. So who is this Jesus of Nazareth and how does he relate to Asia? So for me, that was a time of questioning, but believing that if there is a God, he can answer those questions. And that was my, my time of growing as a growing into an adult faith was actually living in Japan. Mm. And did anyone notice a big change in your life after you made that commitment to follow the Lord? I haven't asked them that question. <laughs> uh, you see, I, I don't have a testimony of, mm. of having uh, been a kid who mm. went obviously off the tracks. Mm. But I think um, whatever our story, it's, we, we all have the opportunity to make certain choices. But um, just because I didn't look like I'd gone off the tracks, mm. um, it was still a, a choice for me mm. to, to, to follow Christ. and. Mm. Um, uh, I know that it made a difference in my life from particularly from that perspective the world will always change there'll always be challenges but you know there's somebody who's got the end game mm. and the peace that you have and knowing that for all the things that the, getting out of your comfort zone and having a go at things 
uh, we can make mistakes, but mm. there's ultimately a creator, creator of the universe who loves us mm. and who does care about not only us, but the world that we're in. Mm. And you obviously have a, a passion to uh, make the world a better place, otherwise you wouldn't be in, in politics. Uh, what was the transition like from uh, being a journalist to a politician? How did that happen? Well, you wouldn't say that's a normal transition, <laughs> going from one very interesting occupation to, to, to politics. I, I do believe that we are called to make a difference. And it's about taking the skills you've got uh, and trusting that you can uh, use them, use them for the good of your community, mm. wherever you are. Uh, I don't believe uh, a, a ministry role as such requires a title. I think we're all called to minister to people, mm. so to serve people. Mm. In, in, uh, and some will do that through other vocations, and I'm, I, I believe that's what I try to do through, through politics. Mm. What was the transition? I saw things that were going on I was not happy about, uh, where people I knew were being impacted in my mm -hmm. local area, and I thought, well, if you don't like it, get in there and have a go. Stop whinging, uh, st step forward and do something. Now, I know that doesn't mean everyone will run for parliament. There are many ways of having an impact mm -hmm. on community debates, community issues. Uh, but there was an opportunity at that time to put my hand up, and I did. And uh, hey presto, there's a lot of work in between. That's the <laughs> truncated story. So don't go anywhere. There's another amazing guest coming up soon on History Makers TV. And what were the big issues that you were passionate about that, that drove you to to to, to, to do something? <laughs> well, there have been a number of issues, but I think the tipping point was I actually saw uh, a the impact of government on people's lives where they weren't being treated fairly and it was actually a road corridor going through people's homes. Mm -hmm. Now obviously um, roads, infrastructure, it's needed for the life, the good of, of the whole and this wasn't about not building roads but it was about the way people were being treated. So uh, you know government has a lot of power mm. and it has to be used very carefully and when it's being used for the public good you still have to consider the private impact. Mm -hmm and not, not crush little people. So that was happening in these circumstances. So mm -hmm. I just thought, well, if you don't like it, get in there and have a go. So that was one issue, but there were others as well. Mm. Now, as Christians, uh, one of the big hot topics in our nation has been traditional marriage. And as you know, I've been quite outspoken about, you know, making sure we, we follow what the Bible says about marriage. And uh, it's, uh, th there's a lot of talk about it in the media all the time. Um, what's what's your your current view on it, and and how how do you think we should respond when people say we should change the definition of marriage? Well, you know, people can come up with different words and different concepts, but uh, at the end of the day, I, I do believe that marriage is between a, a man and a woman. Mm. But for the sake of the children and the, the the home that creates that life around the most vulnerable in our community, mm. particularly children, mm. uh, they don't get to make the choices that adults will make for them. So there's a long legacy in the choices that we all make that mm. impact on the lives of those who are vulnerable. Mm. And I think children deserve a mum and a dad. Mm. I know there are awesome people who will do it on their own as single parents. Uh, I know that there are families that are fractured through broken relationships. Uh, but if you were to look at it, uh, not just at a, from a moral perspective, but from a research base, there is no doubt that children benefit most when they've got uh, that uh, that mirroring of of a relationship with, that a mum and a dad can bring. Mm. I've been lucky to have that in my life, uh, and I know there are many families that strive to have that. And I think that we should strengthen rather than try and weaken that. Mm. That is wonderful to hear you give that reasoned response as well, because a lot of people get emotional and fired up about it. But um, you know, you're exactly right. It's about the children and about uh, the right that they should have to to being raised by a mum and a dad. And, um, I, I think it's um, such an important uh, thing that we have rational discussions about it, not just, you know, uh, a lot of people get hot, hot, on, hot under the collar about that subject. And the, the other big subject that is often raised uh, in Christian circles about politics is the, the pro-life message. Um, is that something that's passionate, that, that we stand up for, for the pro-life message? I am pro-life, mm. and I think one of the challenges in this area, it's become so polarised that uh, while there are the spectrums of the debate where there'll never be a, a meeting of, of, of views and values, what has happened though with the way that the debate has become polarised is that um, perhaps in some ways some of the middle ground and has been lost in that 
uh, once again, some of the research shows that uh, the majority of people in the community don't believe in abortion on demand. That creates uh, the level of loss of human life. There'll be varying views about mm -hmm. where abortion is or isn't uh, acceptable. For me personally, I, I, I believe that um, uh, where the life of the mother is threatened, I think that there are medical grounds and there'll be others who will disagree with me on that. But I do believe that life is precious and that we should strive to protect. But we also need to look beyond just law because if we respond only with law and not with the love of supporting people, the, what this, the, the research is clearly showing is there, there are a lot of women who feel pressured into having an abortion because they don't have, they don't have um, a, a the support of their partner. Mm -hmm. uh, they might feel uh, financially vulnerable. Worse still, some of them will actually be bullied. And there are stri quite strong, uh, strong mm. research also around the, the amount of domestic violence of women when they're pregnant. Mm. So here are women, once again, in a time of great vulnerability. We should be doing more in this area to talk without people feeling it's uh, they're losing one end of the battle uh, of, of an argument as mm. such, to say, how do we better support women when they're vulnerable? who do want to keep their kids and feel that they have an, another alternative. And that's a debating area, w which mm. I wish it was a debate. Mm. It's about how do we help support people when they really do want that support. Mm. That is wonderful. And, uh, you know, I've interviewed uh, people from the, uh, the Priceless Life Centre before, and, you know, they, they not only offer counselling to young girls who are considering an abortion, but support to help them uh, you know, if they do choose to raise the child or, or even to put the child up for adoption, that's an option as well, you know. And uh, I do completely agree. We need to offer support and solutions, not just our views on the subject as well. And uh, I just think uh, it's been an honour to be able to catch up with you today and to hear your passion and uh, your calling that you have in life. And you've got a very influential role in our state and we really want to thank you for standing up and doing what you do. Uh, Fiona, I reckon you're a history maker. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. You're on History Makers TV. We'll have more coming up soon.